A serious tropical disease could see the banana as we know it today wiped from our supermarket shelves, possibly even losing them altogether. Did you know that nearly all exported bananas are actually clones, and that bananas do not grow on trees as you might think? Let's find out more. Bananas are one of the most eaten fruit in the world. 18 million tons of the high potassium fruit are exported every year, and an average of 12 kilos are consumed per person in the US every year. Whoa. There are lots of banana varieties in the world, but the type used commercially is called the Cavendish, which accounts for 99% of exported bananas to developed countries. This variety is used as it is seedless and takes a long time to spoil, making it great to export. But there is a big issue for the Cavendish. These bananas are all clones. Because we have found a great all-round banana, it makes sense to reproduce this exact type over and over to meet demand. We cannot plant seeds of a Cavendish as they are all sterile and do not have seeds. So a portion of the actual plant, which is actually a giant herb of densely packed leaves and not a tree, is cut and put back in the ground to sprout another plant. The problem here is that this process stops genetic mutation taking place, so the genes never diversify and are all exact genetic clones of one original plant. This means that if a disease was capable of killing one banana, that disease will be capable of killing all Cavendish bananas. Uh -oh. This has unfortunately already happened once before with a banana called the Gros Michel, which was actually the commercial banana of choice up until the 1960s. This variety was known to be even superior to the Cavendish, with better durability and a taste sweeter and creamier than the Cavendish. Have you ever thought that banana sweets don't really taste like an actual banana? Well, that is because the taste is based on the Gros Michel banana. The Gros Michel was produced the same way as the Cavendish, and when a fungal disease called Panama disease, which is a soil-borne fungus that attacks the roots, came along that the Gros Michel was not immune to, it spread far and wide and practically wiped out all these bananas in two decades. This left a big problem in the banana industry, and eventually the Cavendish was chosen to replace it commercially as it was immune to the disease. Fast forward again to present day, and the Cavendish has been having a hard time fighting off a disease called Black Sigatoka for a long time. This disease attacks the leaves of the plant and can reduce a crop's yield by 50%. This can be managed with heavy use of fungicides, heavy being up to 50 sprays per crop, which is obviously not ideal, and the disease is showing signs of getting more resistant to the fungicide treatments. But the main problem is a re-emergence of a new and stronger strain of Panama disease, Tropical Race 4, that Cavendish is not immune to. The fungus spreads through soil and can live for decades, making an infected area impossible to grow bananas in. The disease was first spotted in Asia and Australia and since has been seen in Africa. South America is the biggest producer of bananas and has yet to be affected, but the possibility of it spreading is very real. This strain not only has effects on Cavendish, but also some local banana varieties, which is a big worry going forward. So, what can be done? The hope is that we can find ways to manage the disease and contain it to the areas where it can be found. But as that cannot be assured, scientists are busy trying to identify resistant genes in wild bananas that can be bred into a banana that would work commercially and be immune to these diseases. Diversity in genetics is very important if we are to learn from our mistakes and make sure there is a guaranteed future for the mighty banana. Are bananas your favorite fruit? And how would you live without them? Let us know below. Thank you for watching and please subscribe below for more.